happy friday everyone weekend is almost here make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already 6k before christmas guys and dolls we can do it so the topic of discussion for today is something that has come up in Sussex Squad circles but I don't think anybody has really honed in on it. The royal family and the use of people of colour, particularly black people, to deflect from accusations of racism. From the moment Meghan entered the family they have been silent about the treatment that she had received by the media and the racially charged tone of it and they've said nothing about the way Archie was treated either. There is literally a neo-Nazi in jail for threatening Harry and calling him a race traitor and we know full well that they pick and choose as to when they do and don't ever explain or complain but a neo-Nazi calling a member of the royal family a race traitor for having a child with a black biracial woman, I think that's definitely worth complaining about. Another excuse that's often given by the royals, or rather the mouthpieces on behalf of the royals, is that they can't make public statements on what they see as political issues because they can't be seen to be taking sides. Well, there's only two sides here, one is for racism and prejudice and the other is against it and silence is complacency with the side that is prejudiced. In this era you don't get to opt out of the conversation when you're in such a high position of power and when the power that you have obtained itself is based off of the subjugation of people of colour, the pillaging of their wealth and resources that you now get to enjoy. The truth is that they don't want to offend their most loyal fan base and as long as they don't make any major statements, they can show up to events, take some pictures with people of colour and keep it moving. But as annoying as it is that they keep doing this, people of colour keep agreeing to it. Either these people are unaware of what's been going on, not just with Meghan but the long list of royal scandals, or they don't care and they want a little bit of fame by association. Oh look, here's a picture with me and a royal. And let's be honest, a lot of people are easily bought by that. But after the Oprah interview, there's really no excuse. Not only, mind you, for people of colour to still be agreeing to be photographed with these people, but quite frankly, anyone. The amount of evidence that is mounting against the royal family from all corners, whether it's to do with race and what was said about Archie's skin colour, their associations with nefarious people, you are basically saying, I'm okay with all of this and associating with these kind of people. And straight after the interview, what do we see? Prince Charles, two days after, surrounded by black people. Now, he is photographed here with individuals from an organisation called Jesus House. And the last time Charles visited Jesus House, according to the actual caption that accommodated these photos on Instagram, was 2007. So what, I wonder, two days after the Oprah interview, prompted them to make this visit 13 years after the last time they visited these people and people were calling it out in the comments section and then we turn to Kate and William who showed up at a school and as they were walking in there was a black woman, I'm assuming a teacher, walking in with them. Now note that literally everyone else is wearing a jacket except for auntie over here and you can see that she feels cold. But you know, we have to let everyone know that this is definitely an African lady out here in her African print top with freshly done braids. I bet she called her most skilled auntie to do those braids. Auntie Okaya made sure to do her best work for her daughter so she would look nice and fresh for meeting the Lanebridges. And if you remember, this was the moment when Prince William was like, we are very much not a racist family. After a rogue journalist just happened to ask him about the interview, the whole thing, including the question, in my opinion, was all planned for optics. And they do it with children too. Look at my guy over here, he ain't having it, he's like, deuces. They want to be seen with people of colour for PR, remember they are hanging on to the Commonwealth. 
but never actually say anything other than the very loose statement here or there and often to an audience where it's a little bit more comfortable to say it on the off occasion that they do. So for example, when William talked about diversity, he did so at the BAFTAs in front of a very liberal Hollywood audience. He's not going to tell the press at the next Christmas Palace dinner, you all need to stop being racist. That's just not gonna happen. The royals want black faces for show, but they don't want us on an equal footing. We are still expected to stay in our place. And until they fully acknowledge what was done to Meghan, to Archie, what has been done in the present and fully acknowledge and take action to repair the damage of the past, they're not going to convince me or anyone with a critical mind that they still don't hold racist and discriminatory views. Not when people of colour who have been palace staff have spoken out about mistreatment within the firm and royal households, if you didn't know, are exempt from laws that prevent race and sex discrimination. Laws that were made in the 1960s, which are still in place today. Says a lot really, doesn't it? And for the record, I have no issue with members of the royal family working with organisations or people of colour, but they have to acknowledge the damage that they've done and what they have put Meghan through. Otherwise, it's all just for show and us in the Sussex squad are going to call it out. That's all for today's video. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one, my lovelies. Ciao.